Hello and welcome. This is our final tutorial in Python Fundamentals. And here we're going to try to figure out something quite interesting. We have previously created a program that encrypts messages using a Caesar cipher. So we're going to have a look at that and we're going to restructure it. We're going to create some functions. So we're going to segment some code into functions and see if we can rearrange this program to instead of encrypting messages, decrypt. So decodes whatever messages we intercept. We intercept. And to do this, we're going to be using something called the brute force method. What that means is simply there are only 26 possible ways to use the Caesar cipher on a message. And if we can display all 26 answers, it should be obvious which one of them is the message because English looks a lot more clear to us than gibberish. So let's start by dismissing the arbitrary or removing what we don't need anymore. So let's change this message. What message? What write the message you want to decode? And what shift do you want to use? We don't really need a shift anymore. We're going to use every possible shift. So in effect, our program consists of two portions. This one here creates the dictionary, and this one here translates the message. So I'm going to have to create 26 different dictionaries and translate 26 different messages. So I'm going to need a function for either of these. So let's start by indenting this um, and have a function definition create dictionary. What arguments should this one take? Well, um, the alphabet is going to be used anyway, so we can forget about the alphabet. I think we only need to put in the shift and shift should be what's put in. So, and then we we're using the shift inside here. So that's it. This should, this should work. Um, on the other hand, the code message is going to take an argument of message. Define the code message and so if I say message then we're gonna have to replace the input string with a message but that's okay or we can just use the input string now nah, that's all right we can leave it like this. All right, so we're not using the input string anywhere. So how, what exactly are we going to do to get 26 different answers? Well, let's try this. For i in range 0 to 26, we can create dictionary and the input of it is shift so the input can be i so the shift is going to be initially zero and then we're going to go create dictionary so for all of them so create dictionary and then we're going to decode message and we're going to use the input string and then we're going to print ciphertext So this could be ciphertext is a global variable, but it should change every single time a message is decoded. So that shouldn't matter. And I think this, we might be able to do it. And I'm just going to use this encoded message here. So let's try this out. Invalid syntax. Yes, needs a semicolon. F5. Okay, let's find out where the code message input string local variable cipher text referenced before assignment. Okay, 
Let's try making ciphertext a local variable for each message. Oh, not ciphertext. I have to go back now to this. Okay. So we're we are now into print ciphertext and well, I guess we could print ciphertext is not defined. Now ciphertext is local and we can't reference it. So okay. Let's try printing ciphertext at the end of each decode message. F5. Grr. All right, we need to get the <sighs> Okay. Unfortunately, in our create dictionary, we printed a dictionary each time. This is completely unnecessary, so we can get rid of this and we can try again. Aha. And let's see if we can spot the one that's in English. Dun 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 dun. Hmm. I have a nice view of the city. There it is. It wasn't as easy as I thought. Perhaps because the I is not capitalized. But you have just seen how to use functions with pre-existing code. I did not want to create this in functions because I did not want to use a maximum number of new concepts because it was already complicated enough. But with the decoding, the functions definitely do their job. Let me just reiterate, um, inside a function, you're going to use a variable that only exists inside this function. So here's the problem with ciphertext. It, they did not, the function did not want to use a global variable. It wanted a local one. Okay, so once we create it here, it only exists pretty much in this space. So I had to print the ciphertext inside this function. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to print it outside of it. So, then in the loop, I just created a dictionary uh, from zero through to 26. So 26 different dictionaries. And for each dictionary, I printed out the decoded message. And lo and behold, eventually I have a nice view of the city popped up. Brute force method. Okay, I hope you all had a good time. I certainly have teaching you. I'll see you later in another course. All right, you got to the end and you may be wondering where can you get the file or a PDF document of the same tutorial. Don't worry, the link is right under the video, which will take you to this page. The whole Python fundamentals course, it is free. And you enroll, you enter, I don't know, we can, I created a, a Gmail account, aussiejoblow at gmail.com, got a password. And agree to the term, sign up. It could be this easy, I think. And there you are. In pick a tutorial. It'll see the same you'll see the same tutorial as it is on YouTube, and you will have a PDF document that goes with and a downloadable file. So enjoy that and see you later.